Good morning. We're on our way to the uh, Southampton Art Fair. Just a normal morning. I think I went to bed at 3, got up at 6, drove from Beacon, packed the car, picked up my staff, picked up uh, Laura and Stephen at the gallery. We're packed to the gills. Uh, I rented a, uh, yeah, you can see we've got uh, Tom Deiniger's uh, sculpture, The Man with the Pearl Earring. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're uh, on our way. It's about two hours to the Southampton Art Fair. I got uh, a text from our art shipper who delivered all the artwork this morning at about 9.15. Uh, and he sent me pictures of our booth and it looks good, but it's a little bit smaller than I anticipated. I thought it was a wider booth, a little more area to breathe. It looks a little bit denser, a little tighter. So we don't have quite as, as much room as I thought. So now I'm uh, sort of in a deep spin trying to figure out, okay, if it's a tighter booth, how do we actually show a Budia's work effectively, Basmat's work effectively, Edwin Schlossberg's work effectively, and Gonzalo Bobunda. So we will see. This is sort of wild. This is like a, this is the VIP lounge. They gave two or three or four galleries a space, sort of we were later coming into this fair. And so I think we are now, four galleries make up the VIP lounge. And I bumped into this crazy guy, Tom Dinager. Yeah? Like what the hell are you doing here? Well, I found some zip ties. Oh. And you know, I just I just was following and uh, found some junk out there. I did. We picked them up. Oh, and with Russ. I plan on them. You, are if you this one of those? Happens are, are, again next year. They're gonna be in that sculpture. That's great. Well, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. On behalf of Southampton, oh. the residents of Southampton. <laughs> oh, I'd like an official. Human, human, it's gotta come. From humans the all over the world. Thank right. you for picking right. up our trash. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so basically, our issue is that the space was smaller than I expected. It is actually from, I think, the outside wall, 24 feet. Um, but inside it's about 21 feet and so there's a, it's, it's tighter and so I decided instead of having four pieces by Basmat I wanted just minimum three so basically I'm trying to sort of uh, I'm trying to think about how we're going to actually install Ed Schlossberg's work in relation to the other works here so I think sometimes what's nice is um, you know if I draw basically a wall you know and sort of like trying to imagine you know what this might look like. This saves a little bit of time. So, it, you know, it, I think it breaks it up a little bit. I think this helps me. Often I'll follow my gut and I, it's very important to do that. But sometimes I'll step back and I'll ask my colleagues to give me feedback. So I'll ask, you know, you Steven or Lara um, and we're playing, which we're just, we're, you know, I'm not sure yet, but it, there's a dynamic in this space, in this gallery um, that we're trying to get. And every time it's a little different. Yeah. It's actually level. It's level. It's really funny. That's really funny. That's sort of interesting. Uh, the other people hung across there, they're painting and it looks about an inch and a half off. Yeah, I think. So this is very simple. We're going to go down. You have to align it with these lines because that's the reference point people are looking at to decide if it's level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, yeah, but no. Um, I think this will be okay. It'd be sort of funny is uh, we're going to use the other two and this should actually. <laughs> The, uh, it might look weird, but it may be straight. Oh my God, it looks straight. It looks good. I like it there. Here, I think it's, it's gotta be, I don't think your standard, maybe, is this too far? I, I, I looked out the window, is that too high? But I, I think it's nice, it's sort of, I, I want it to be sort of like an installation. He, here it's, it's sort of boring. I think here it's a little bit more interesting. So basically here at the Southampton Art Fair, one of our challenges was the booth was a little bit smaller than I had actually been uh, 
sort of informed uh, about. And so when I got here, it, it seemed a little bit too tight. And so we had to make an adjustment. We had to figure out which artworks we're gonna work with each other. Uh, could we put in as many pieces as we had planned to bring? Uh, so, you know, last minute adjustments. And so we just opened and I wasn't sure what was gonna be the result. So now let's take a look what happened. So we have basically uh, a lot of color and, you know, we had uh, the booth walls, I had hoped to be wider, but uh, we actually had to eliminate uh, one painting. But what was interesting is these three actually seem to really correspond with each other. So this is beautiful. So that's one good thing uh, for this artist, Basmat Levin. Uh, but then how does Basmat relate to the other artists? So let's go look a little further. So here, as we go into the booth, uh, her circles and color, I think, relate really well with Abudia's drawings here. These drawings are loose, they're colorful, they're spiritually, I mean, they've got guts. And I think there's somehow, with the color and the vibrancy, somehow there's something magical when you see these two come together. So this artist, Basmat, is helping Abudia, and Abudia is helping Basmat. So together, it's this sort of symbiosis that's happening in the art uh, gallery space here. And so here, we have another artist, Gonzalo Mabunda. Gonzalo, who uses uh, weapons of destruction that are decommissioned by missionaries in Mozambique. It looks tribal, but it's contemporary, and it's innovative. It has a sense of history, tradition, yet the artist is innovative using new materials that are, um, that are sort of surprising, and it's powerful. It's a face, a pickaxe, a ammunition box, bullet shells. It's great. And so this face, this mask, relates to Abudia's faces of children that's happening here and they're powerful is this like a buffalo or a bull and then he's got collage and you know he's got the skeleton as the nose or the brain and here you got another face and this wide mouth and this is his unique way to express himself um, so here we also then have these other works by Tom Deininger Tom you know, who basically is like a naturalist, he's like an Audubon, but then he uses trash to create these wonderful observations in life. And he's actually created this wonderful, you know, realistic rendition of a red-winged blackbird that is perched on the head of a sculpture that comes from Indonesia, who has a pearl earring in his ear. And so this is the man with the pearl earring. There's this looseness, this graffiti things happening here, uh, this artist, artist who used trash and very powerful lines. And then here, interesting, this is Edwin Schlossberg. And Ed, who is really America's quintessential poet, he is a brilliant artist who used words in his art practice. He's also an autodidact, and he's a, he's a brilliant thinker. And uh, he is a visual poet who's actually inviting us to interact with his poetry. And what does it mean? Where do we start? He's letting you, the viewer, or me, the viewer, to say, okay, let's start here. Maybe let's start with Edge, and then let's try to read something. Edge passes for memory. How eludes reflection. Never believing the past was fixed. Never relying on the solidarity of the, it looks like emotion, it's hard to read. Here we have another piece by Ed. This is, I looked out the window, and he engaged, he invites us to read his work, and this is what he was looking at when he's looking out the window. Um, and then here, he's the artist of words. So words and words and words. And so through words are always about the act of using them or ignoring them. Words are a measure of our agreements. So he's using words to help us uh, imagine activate our neurons our, our, the, you know, uh, in our brain. And so it's exciting. I, I like this artist, he's different. Today has been really fun. I think that you realized uh, that I didn't realize exactly how things were going to actually play out. But you can't always you know, cross all your T's. You gotta have room for um, a little bit of change, a little bit of this, a little of that. And I think that 
I wanted all the artists that we're showing to have a nice conversation. I wanted them to help um, help each other, help one another. And I think that we have come together with a bouquet of design uh, that is an installation that is dynamic, that is different, that is surprising, and I think um, quite beautiful. So come, come find us.